Starting off this countdown, we have the human monkey hybrid. Guys, I wish this was fake, but it's not. So scientists are currently trying to make human monkey hybrids. They have high hopes that these experiments will succeed because monkeys and humans are similar genetically. Spanish biologist Juan Carlos Belmonte is working with monkey researchers in China to perform these experiments. So basically they are mixing human cells into monkey embryos. Their objective is to grow a monkey whose organs are completely made out of human cells. They then would use these animals and their organs for people that need the organs. Of course, this is controversial in a number of ways, as you can imagine. In our number nine spot today, we have bees. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. A lot of us know bees as pretty harmless and kind of cute little pollinators, unless of course you're allergic or terrified, but truthfully, bees normally do a lot more good than harm. That was of course until an experiment in the 70s went awry and caused a new crossbred bee. This experiment was to take a regular honeybee and breed it with a bee that was found in Africa that produces a lot more honey, and of course the goal was to produce a manageable bee that would also be able to provide more honey than a regular honeybee would. Well, the bees that came out were a lot less manageable and they didn't even make more honey. After this experiment ended, however, the bees got out into the environment and the 80s saw the beginning of the trouble. These bees are not only aggressive towards other kinds of bees, which creates a huge problem, but they're also very aggressive towards humans. And when these bees sting, their stinger stays with them so they can sting multiple times. Victims of these swarms receive 10 times as many stings as regular swarms, they react to disturbances 10 times faster, and they will also chase the disturbance a quarter of a mile. These bees have actually caused at least 1,000 deaths, so it's safe to say that this is one experiment gone horribly wrong. Moving on, at number eight, we have the pig human hybrid. Again, you heard me correctly. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human pig hybrid. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then it was taken out and analyzed and the embryo survived and contained some human cells. So their hope is to grow human organs inside of pigs instead of waiting for a donor. Similar to the tests that are being done on the monkeys as I previously mentioned. No animals are safe at this point. In our number seven spot today, we have the wolfin. I wish I never had to say the word wolfin, but unfortunately they do exist. These guys are created when a female common bottlenose dolphin is bred with a male false killer whale. They're extremely rare and have been found in the wild, but unfortunately most of the ones that have existed were bred in captivity. The first recorded wolfin was born at the Tokyo Sea World in 1981, and he very sadly died just 200 days later. Probably a prime example of why they really maybe shouldn't even exist in the first place. The first that was born in the United States that actually miraculously survived was at a sea life park in Hawaii in May of 1985. She ended up having three babies. The first passed away after a few days. The second passed away at the age of nine, but thankfully the third one is still living. In March of last year, both her and her daughter are still alive, but they still remain in captivity. Coming in at number six, we have Ilya Ivanich Ivanov. What a name. But this is the name of the dude that originally tried to create a human chimp hybrid. Ilya was a Russian biologist who did a number of disturbing experiments in the 1920s. He started with crossbreeding animals. So he managed to produce a zebra donkey hybrid, a Z-donk, and a bison cow cross, which is a Zubron, and also crossed rats, mice, guinea pigs, and rabbits together with each other. But he decided to take it further with the human and monkey crossing. In fact, he successfully managed to inseminate three female chimpanzees with human sperm. His experiments were so famous that five women actually offered to carry half-ape babies inside of them in the name of science, which thankfully didn't go through. Or if it did, he did it in private with no one else knowing. In our number five spot today, we have farm cattle. In the 1990s, farmers in India were told that if they crossbred their cattle, they'd be able to breed cattle that could produce more milk, which would of course mean more money for them and their families. This should be amazing 
amazing and great, right? Well, considering why we're all here today, I think we all know the answer to that question. Different breeds of bulls were brought in and farmers were expecting great things, but they ended up being stuck with cattle that did produce more milk, but also needed way more higher quality food or else they'd stop producing more milk. And they were less resistant to the local diseases, so they required more veterinary visits. So it's this kind of situation like, yes, they are producing more milk, which will get us some more money, but they also cost us more. And truthfully, most of the times the increased milk production did not outweigh the growing costs. In our fourth spot, we have Hiromitsu Nakuchi. Hiromitsu is a stem cell biologist from Tokyo. Just recently, his experiments have been approved by the government. And let me tell you what he's planning on doing. Basically, he hopes to grow human cells in mice and rats, and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So again, another experiment having to do with growing human cells in animals. So his experiment started by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make a pancreas for themselves. But his hope is that the rodents' bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas for themselves. Here's the thing, while conducting the experiments, if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human-type brain, then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement that he has with the government. They don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. In our number three spot today, we have the beefalo. Okay, so beefalo sounds kind of cute and silly and it also looks pretty normal, so what could be wrong with this one? Well, let's start at the beginning. So, a guy named Charles Buffalo Jones started breeding them in 1906 because the bison population in Arizona at the time was so exceptionally low. So, bison were bred with domestic cattle in order to produce a hardy commercial animal. He ended up just giving up on this and released the animals who were then managed by the state and the number Numbers remain relatively low because of the limited hunting licenses. Well, when the beefalo found their way into a national park where hunting is banned and there aren't any natural predators, the population began to grow by 50% a year. That's wild! So none of this is necessarily bad, but it's the animal's environmental impact that is really the trouble. First off, they're very thirsty animals and can consume 10 gallons each per trip to a watering hole. So they can obviously clear up a water source pretty quickly. Not to mention the fact that they do their business in the water and how their heavy weight compacts the soil. Well, basically, they have thrown the ecosystem off balance and have pushed out other animals and the insects and plant life around have also been affected. In our second spot, we have the breeding gone wrong. If you're a dog lover like Olivia and I, then this story is going to make you upset. In 2010, a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said she didn't want to keep her. When Julie saw the dog, she was in complete disbelief. The dog had a squished body, huge jaw, a bad underbite, and was oddly shaped. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from a backyard breeder who was carelessly breeding a bunch of his dogs together. Thankfully, Julie took the dog in and gave her a loving home. But it's sad to see dogs born like this just from reckless people who only have money on their mind. In our number one spot today, we have lions. In the 1980s, the Chapier Zoo in India started an experimental program where they would breed together a domestic lion, which is a bit smaller and has a less shaggy mane, with an African lion in the hopes that they could be introduced to the wild and help with the dwindling population of wild lions in India. The zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. When the cubs were born, it was clear that this was already a mistake as the cubs had severely weak back legs. They were having extreme trouble walking and as they got older, their immune systems started to fail. By 2000, when they had already bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions, they finally decided to stop the program and all of the males were given vasectomies in order to stop any reproduction. There are laws that prohibit them from killing animals, so they were simply just waiting for them to die naturally. When there's a dwindling population of lions, it's insane to me that they wasted 20 years trying to do this when they could have just simply bred the lions that they had. Kicking off the list at number 10, a lamel. Or a comma, you pick. That's the best part of these hybrid animals. They have two names, really, so you can choose whatever sounds the most silly. A lamel is the result of crossbreeding in Dubai. Yeah, the crown prince thought, you know what? We've made enough memories here. Let's make an animal. Why not? What could go wrong? Let's make a comma and name it Rama. And he did. He did just that. Rama the comma. Just rolls off the tongue. What could go wrong? Researchers in the United Arab Emirates artificially inseminated a camel back in 1998. They were hoping to have this brand new animal born with the wool of a llama and the temperament of a camel. Instead, 
They got him, this little guy. Rama is known to be moody, but you know what? To be fair, I would be moody as well if I was just born. If I was just created out of nowhere. Like, why do my knees hurt? They're like, well, those are new knees. We have never seen those knees before. So that's why they're clicking. Number nine, mules and hennies. So right off the bat here, a mule is already a hybrid. It's the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. And a henny is the offspring of a male horse and a female donkey. Get it? Got it? Great. Mules have been a pretty common asset since George Washington days, fun fact. But it wasn't until 2003 until the University of Idaho cloned one. Yeah, we cloned a hybrid animal. I feel like we're flying too close to the sun here, honestly. The mule's name, well, the clone rather, was Idaho Gem. That's a fair name. He's, he's pretty well a gem, yeah. Number eight, sheep goats. I love these ones. I'm not gonna lie, they're, they're odd, but they're very cute, undeniably cute. These little miracles. It was really this one goat in Northern Germany who did this one. He saw this sheep on the other side of a fence and thought, you know what? Forget the last million years of evolution. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna go talk to her, let's see what happens. She goes to another school, let's see what's up. I'm gonna be brave. You hopped the fence, went over, got some phone numbers, had some dates, did some dirties. The odd time this does happen, usually nothing happens long term. But when farmer Claus Ekstrenbrink saw this fling, he couldn't believe his eyes later. A sheep goat, or a geep, was born in front of his eyes, yeah, and they named it Lisa. What a lovely name. How sweet is that? Also, this list starts a little tame and then they get into some, you know, pig human stuff. So if you're saying, aw, right now, no, buckle up, it gets much worse. Starting with number seven, beefalo. Yeah, not necessarily the government, but back in the mid 1700s, thousands of ranchers, I'm talking like 6,000 ranchers, all agreed to raise hybrid beefalo. Yeah, that was the thing they were gonna change in history at that point. They're like, let's do it, and then they went with beefalo. Well, they didn't really have a choice. The beefalo is a result of American bison meeting cattle. These accidental hybrids are normal. They're expected in some way, shape, or form, but cut to the late 1800s, cattle and bison were intentionally created. Yeah, Colonel Samuel Benson, guy was warden of Stony Mountain Penitentiary. He's like, you know what? I'm a crossbreed some animals. Yeah, take my thousands of keys. Thank you. I'm gonna go a animal life it is for me now, I guess. Guy buys eight bisons and then breeds them with Durham cattle. Yeah, what do you do on your weekends when you retire, I guess. The beefalo is a great improvement. Apparently it's a great milker. I, I don't know much about milking beefaloes or buffaloes, but Warren Samuel Benson, he was your guy in the late 1800s. He would have chatted your ear off about milk and beefalo. Number six, lions. Back in the 1980s, the Chat Bar Zoo in India started an experimental program where they would breed together a domestic lion, which is a bit smaller and has less of a shaggy mane, with an African lion in the hopes that they could be introduced to the wild and help with the dwindling population of wild lions in India. On paper, this sounds like a good idea, a step forward rather, dare I say. The zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and then brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. Yeah, it's like, hey, we saved you. Just kidding, you're going to a much worse place. When the cubs were born, it was clear this was a mistake. Things weren't going well at all. His back legs were quite weak. They were having extreme trouble walking and as they got older, obviously this got worse. Their immune systems started to fail more and more. And come 2000, they had bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions. They finally decided to stop the program and then all these males were given vasectomies in order to you know, prevent any reproduction down the line. But there were laws that prohibit them from killing these animals. So they were actually just waiting for them to die naturally, which is, Sad. You're like, hey, great law, but yeah, today, come on. When there's a dwindling population of lions, it's you know, it's wild that they wasted 20 years trying to do this when you know they could have simply just bred lions that they had and then focused all their energy on that instead of creating a alien lion. But who am I? I'm just a YouTube host. It's probably harder than it sounds, but man, this stuff is uh, it's pretty rough. Number five, Walfin. Well, there's a word I have never said before in my entire life. These guys were created when a female common bottlenose dolphin was bred with a male killer whale. Yeah, what a riot, what a pair, what a duo. These are extremely rare and they've been found in the wild, but unfortunately, most of the ones that have existed were bred in captivity. Yeah, because humans suck. The first recorded Walfin was born at the Tokyo Sea World in 1981, but he sadly died not even a year after his birth. Just two days in and it was done. Obviously, this is not working out, but the first born Walfin in the United States that miraculously somehow survived was at Sea Life Park in Hawaii, and that was in 1985. And her name was Kekamalu. She ended up having three babies. She did survive. Now, the first baby passed away after a few days, and the second passed away at the age of nine, but nine years old. This is already a massive improvement from what we've seen earlier, and thankfully the third one is still living to this day. Yeah, both Kekamalu and her daughter are still alive, but they still remain in captivity. Number four, farm cow. 
In the 1990s, farmers in India figured that if they were to crossbreed their cattle, they'd be able to breed cattle that could produce more milk, which would of course mean more money, which is better for everyone and their families. Now this was an ideal step, right? What could possibly go wrong? A lot of things could go wrong here. Different breeds of bulls were brought in and farmers were expecting milky results, you know, good results. And they ended up with cattle that did produce more milk, but at the same time, these guys needed way more food or else they'd stop producing said great amounts of milk. They wouldn't get milky results after that point. Plus they were less resistant to local diseases, so they required way more uh, vet visits. So yeah, they're producing more milk, which will get us more money, but they also cost us more money long-term. So AKA, not a solution. Number three, dog mixing. Oh, this one's sad too. No more fun and games, no more milk and jokes. This one's wild. But this one is also a reminder that you can't just put any type of dog together and then just see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna fly, my friends. That's not how, DNA works. I got the D, didn't know how to do the N or the A really. Back in 2010, a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy came in and said she just didn't want the dog anymore, wasn't feeling comfortable owning this specific dog. In fact, it didn't look like any dog she had seen in the past, which was odd considering her occupation. The dog had a shorter body, it was like stuffy almost and its jaw was larger and it had a massive underbite. It didn't look easy to navigate at all, this poor thing. Well, it turns out the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. This is the result of backyard breeding, just, you know, improvising on your own. Don't do that. Yeah, leave it to the people who know what they're doing, please, for the love of God. Julie ended up taking care of this dog, because she had to, because this person's like, eh, bye, and they had a great relationship, but this is not ideal. Don't do this. Number two, human pig. Yeah, of course we had to save this one for the last two. This is wild. This is some next level stuff. This is a Marvel film? Human pig? What are we doing? Scientists in California back in 2017 were up to some pretty remarkable stuff. An embryo was placed in an adult pig for around four weeks, then once scientists analyzed said embryo afterwards, they learned that the embryos not only one, survived the process, which is a miracle in itself, but two, the human cells also remained. Uh, okay, now what? This is next level crossbreeding right here. The goal here, scientifically, was to grow human organs inside the pigs. And Juan Carlos Esbezua Belmonte successfully created pig-human hybrids at the Salk Institute lab. Yeah, can't wait till we have a pig superhero now, or pig uh, villain. Those exist too. Number one, Pizzly Bear. Yeah, we gotta finish this list off on an educational note. We always gotta remind the world that the ice everywhere is melting all the time. Yep, we're slowly melting, folks. Better believe it. And Pizzly Bears are here to warn us. Back in 2006, a Canadian hunter found a hybrid bear. They called it a Pizzly Bear or a Gruller Bear because it looked like a mix of the two. But it actually was, it was a hybrid. Tests were later done in 2010 after more appeared in Alaska and Northern Canada. Now historically, polar bears branched off of grizzlies DNA wise, but now we're at a point where they're coming back together. Why? Because everything's melting and food is becoming sparse. So now they're going further away to find food and in turn, they're meeting each other. And then they're, you know, doing the, doing the thing. Now they're starting to merge back together. And in turn, we get these terrifying bears. We have some human hybrids, some, some pig stuff, some, some milk talk. This list was loaded. This is a loaded pierogi full of uh, crossbreeding facts. There you go, just what you wanted to hear, I bet. In our number 10 spot, we have mice with human butts. Okay, so not exactly human butts per se, but with human anal sphincters, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I didn't either, I had to look it up. An anal sphincter is a group of muscles at the end of the rectum that surrounds the anus and controls the release of stool, AKA poop. So anyways, in 2011, scientists were able to create a human mouse hybrid by bioengineering human anal sphincters out of human nerves and muscles and surgically transplanting them onto their rear ends. Yep, sounds horrifying, but this was in fact an experiment that was done with the hope that if proven successful, the scientists can help humans by making replacement anal sphincters for them. They were quite happy with their results as the mice seemed to take well to them as they fused with the rest of the flesh. They even found that the mice could relax and contract them like their own natural sphincters. Wild. Coming up at our number nine spot, we have the mouse with the ear. In 1997, a team of Harvard and MIT scientists got together to perform an experiment where they put a scaffolding in the shape of a human ear inside a mouse. It was made of biodegradable materials and so eventually the scaffolding was absorbed into the mouse's body, making a biological ear of flesh and cartilage. This could be removed and actually surgically transplanted onto a human. Whoa, this is 
was truly mind-blowing to me. If this project continued, it could mean great things for plastic surgeons everywhere whom are known to have a hard time reconstructing ears. But of course, this was a very expensive project, so it hasn't been able to continue. I hope the mouse with the ear got to live a long life. In our number eight spot, we have mice with human brains. This is one of those experiments that makes you wonder what the world will look like in 20 years. This is an experiment that was done in 2014 where mice were given millions of human brain cells. Each mouse in the experiment had about 12 million human cells to be in fact, and in the experiment, the researchers noticed that the human cells tended to take over the mouse brain cells. Move over, we're more powerful than you. The experiment was quite the success with the scientists discovering that these mice showed that their memory was four times stronger than a regular mouse's. Unfortunately though, they had to go through some pretty inhumane practices to learn this fact, including playing really loud music and attacking the mice with an electrical shocking tool. They were then able to measure how the mice reacted the next time they heard the sound. Gosh, memory is such a crazy thing. To think that sound, smell, taste, sight, touch can all cause pain if there's a specific memory attached to them is honestly wild. In today's seventh spot, we have monkeys with human cells. Okay, so you're probably thinking, isn't this possibly a dangerous experiment as humans and monkeys are already super close to each other in many ways? Well, in 2007, Yale University decided to take the risk and find out. They put human neural stem cells into five different monkeys to analyze how it would affect Parkinson's disease. The experiment proved to be quite successful as the monkeys who suffered with the disease all could eat and walk and move way better than they could before. They also observed that the monkeys had no tumors or tremors and no bad side effects. The experiment was quite ethically controversial even though it was a success. And so whether it continues to be done with monkeys in the future is unclear. In our number six spot, we have the human chimpanzee. Another risky experiment, but one that was done when there wasn't a very high concern for human ethics. So AKA, a while ago. Apparently in 1967, a group of Chinese scientists were successful in impregnating a chimpanzee with human sperm. Two Chinese scientists have claimed this, but it hasn't been official confirmed to be true. But from what they have said, they were successful with their experiment, and the chimpanzee was three months pregnant, only to be killed in a horrific attack on the lab, and all of their work was destroyed. It is said that this was due to the cultural revolution at the time. In any case, scientists have claimed to want to try this experiment again in the 80s, but nothing came of it. Probably for the best, as it has also been said that they plan to use this human chimpanzee hybrid to drive carts and herd sheep and also send it out to space. This is purely on the basis of it having a human brain, of course. But yeah, maybe ethically not a good reason for creating these creatures. In our number five spot today, we have the human mouse. In a series of experiments in 2010, scientists at the Salk Institute were able to create a mouse with almost an entirely human liver. Whoa. In the past, experiments like this were done on chimpanzees, and there was a lot of controversy over this as there was much speculation in regards to the ethics of this experiment. So the researchers opted for mice to be safe. Honestly, you would think that there would be controversy over all animals, but Anyways, the project was supposed to study diseases such as hepatitis B and C and malaria. After injecting the mice with the illnesses, the researchers tried testing for a cure. There's been many breakthroughs so far, and so scientists continue to be hopeful with these experiments. In our number four spot today, we have the human pig. An experiment was done in the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota to try and examine how human cells would interact with pig cells if they were to come in contact with each other. Through concoction Concocting this experiment, the clinic was able to successfully produce a pig with human cells. Yes, it was still a pig seemingly on the outside, but on the inside, half of its cells were human. They injected human cells into pig fetuses and voila! a human-pig hybrid. Through doing this experiment, they noticed that the pig cells stayed 
to one side of the body while the human cells stayed to the other side. But every so often, some of the cells would interact and fuse together to make a brand new DNA, a human pig DNA. Pretty cool. It would be awesome if they would allow these animals to grow so that they can study them to see if they end up being able to do any humanly functions over time. But as such, that is not the case so far. In our number three spot today, we have human animal milk. Scientists from Russia and Belarus successfully genetically modified goats to produce human breast milk. Since then, scientists from all over have been trying to make the milk more human. As much as the Russian and Belarusian scientists tried, they only managed to make the milk 60% human with a specific enzyme, lysamine, and the protein, lactoferrin, being apparent. They are usually found in human milk. Apparently, a Chinese team made a whole herd of cattle, that's 300 cattle, that produced human milk. The goal is to make human breast milk more available in stores for mothers that can't can't breastfeed and have to resort to formula. There's talk of the same company wanting to create a human milk cheese, and that is where I draw the line. What is the purpose of this? Just no. In our number two spot today, we have human organs. There is a scientist named Hiromitsu Nagauchi who was given a $1.4 million grant from the US Army to work on developing human animal hybrids with the purpose to create a farm of animals that can be harvested for human hearts and lungs. Of course, one of the biggest reasons for these types of experiments is to see if we can find a way to solve the human organ shortage that is needed for transplants around the world. The idea of creating a farm to harvest these organs would be revolutionary for humans and would give a patient a higher likelihood of getting one and surviving. So an incredible cause, even though the idea of doing it, well, I'm glad I don't have that job. In 2017, Hiromitsu and his team created 186 pig-human hybrids that unfortunately was only allowed to develop for 28 days before they were destroyed. Apparently, his team is currently working on a sheep-human hybrid. They have yet to have complete success, but they feel that they are getting closer and closer. Finally, coming up in our number one spot today, we have the rabbit man. Yes, you heard that correctly. A man that is a rabbit. I was gonna say, you know, something out of a nightmare, but honestly, nah, a pig man would be way more terrifying. In Shanghai in 2003, a team of scientists successfully infused human cells in rabbit eggs in a laboratory dish, creating an embryo of a new creature that was, yes, you guessed it, half rabbit, half human. Apparently, the United States scientists have been trying to perform this experiment for quite some time, but never managed to fully pull it off as none ever survived. In this experiment, the majority of the DNA in the creatures was human, and just a small amount of them was rabbit. Apparently, they never allowed the world to see this creature as after a few days of growth, they decided to destroy it and harvest it for stem cells. Damn, why would they go through all of that trouble only to destroy it? We could have possibly had our first talking animal. Oh, humans. In our number 10 spot, we have Vladimir Demikov. Vladimir is a scientist from the Soviet Union that tried to create a two-headed dog. Not making this up. Not in the regular crossbreeding way that you may assume. He literally amputated the body of one of the dogs and attached it to the other. This honestly makes me sick to talk about. The dogs only lasted four days before passing away. And guess what? He did it again. He did it again. The next experiment ended up with two dogs living for about a month. But guess what? He literally had no purpose for these experiments. Just the ego satisfaction of being able to say that he did it. Well, thankfully he didn't because he doesn't deserve any satisfaction or praise. Just gross. In our number nine spot, we have Paracelsus. Paracelsus is known for being a Swiss physician, scientist, and alchemist in the 1500s during the Renaissance. He didn't necessarily experiment with crossbreeding humans with animals, but he did experiment with making humans tiny and ginormous. Also, he was seemingly evil slash insane, so I just wanted to put him on this list. Paracelsus was convinced he could grow giants and tiny humans by growing them from a jar of Yep. Apparently he would keep the jar in a warm place and feed the creatures blood to make them grow. I can just 
see him sprinkling in some blood into that jar. <laughs> Apparently he was quite successful and managed to grow tiny humans, but allegedly the small creatures turned on him and ran away. <laughs> Naturally. They were said to be a foot high. In our number 8 spot we have Irving Wiseman. Irving Wiseman was working at Stanford University as a researcher when he was given permission to inject a mouse with human brain cells. They just wanted to see what would happen. They were instructed to stop the experiment once the human-like behaviors got to a specific point like improved memory or problem solving. Because then they'll have a pinky in the brain sitch and the concept of that only sounds good in the cartoon world. I'm not ready for a mouse world takeover anytime soon. In our number 7 spot we have Gordon Gallup and his team of scientists. Ok so not saying Gordon Gallup is the evil scientist, but more that all of the scientists that consented to do this in the first place may have been operating from an evil frequency. Or perhaps they were just doing what they were told because it's their job because let's be real, the real powerful people that make the decisions are the ones funding such projects as these. But since I have no idea who funded this as that would probably take too much digging that I don't have time for and it will probably just lead us to the US government, <laughs> we're going to just call this spot Gordon Gallup and his team of scientists. Gordon Gallup was once one of the leading experts in evolutionary psychology and he worked with a team of scientists in the 1920s on interbreeding humans with chimpanzees. He leaked to the press that they were actually successful. The experiment was conducted at the Orange Park Laboratory in Florida. Everyone proceeds to google the financial backers there. This is where a female chimpanzee was inseminated with human the animal not only became pregnant, but then proceeded to give birth to a living being, a human Z. But get this, they did not allow the human Z to live. After all of that, it was euthanized. What the heck man, potentially harmed this animal by impregnating it only to kill its baby cub. <sighs> My inner future mama bear is poking through and I don't like this. In our number 6 spot we have another group of scientists, the Belgian scientists. It really is so hard to name just one scientist responsible because it really does take a village to raise a child and in this case to create a mutant cow. Yes, a team of Belgian scientists started back in the 1800s to breed native cattle with short horn cattle and over time they only selected the biggest and strongest and eventually that led them to creating the Belgian super cow. A ginormous cow that literally looks like it's on steroids and I'm kinda afraid of it. I'm, I'm very afraid of it. It is unclear why these experiments were being done, I can only assume for more meat. So I guess we can't call these scientists evil per se without a justified reason, but hopefully they have a good one because otherwise, leave those cows alone. In our number 5 spot we have Juan Carlos Belmonte. Juan is a biologist at the Salk Institute in California that has been working with other scientists and researchers in China on creating a human animal chimera. Basically a monkey embryo will be given human cells to create this. Now before you get upset and say what for, I think this may arguably be the best reason for doing this kind of experiment. The reason this is being done is to see if animals can possess organs such as livers and kidneys that are entirely human and can be used in the future as organs for transplants. As we do have a transplant shortage around the world, coming up with a solution to this is vital. Apparently every 10 minutes a new person is added to the waiting list for an organ transplant. So at this point it is unclear as to whether the experiment has been completely successful, but I'm sure we'll know in the upcoming years. In our number 4 spot we have Dr. Carl Clawberg. This guy is truly very evil. He was a doctor that would work in the infamous monstrous camps that I cannot name due to YouTube violation reasons so please catch my drift. The monstrous camps during World War II, specifically the Poland camp. Apparently originally he was interested in sterilizing all of the women of the camp and eventually his interests expanded. He was allowed to experiment on thousands but only 700 survived. He also artificially inseminated prisoners through a variety of methods and tormented his victims by claiming to have injected animal sp 
into their womb to create a monster. There are no reports that confirm this to be 100% true, as well as there are no reports of the after effects of this. So we have to conclude that this horrible, uh, unconsented experiment was thankfully a failure. Just pure evil. In our number three spot, we have Hiromitsu Nagauchi. Hiromitsu is a scientist from Japan that is leading a team at the University of Tokyo. He and his team plans to grow human cells in mice and rat embryos and then transport them into surrogate animals, similar to work being done at Stanford University in the US. The goal is yet again to continue to see if animals can produce human organs that can later be transplants for humans. Up until recently, Japan was very strict as to how long the human cells in the embryos were allowed to be kept alive till. But recently the laws changed and they're allowed to be kept until the animal is brought to term. Whoa. This will help so much in terms of what they will be able to find through studying this process, but of course there are many ethical concerns around this experiment such as once this new animal is brought to term then won't it be a baby? Some claim that this is pure evil to then destroy this baby after, but gosh, I wonder if the decision maker of these experiments struggle with this, cause I definitely would. In our number two spot, we have an unknown evil scientist that created the human sheep. In 2017, villagers of a small town in South Africa were frightened when a local sheep gave birth to a human sheep crossbreed. This is truly terrifying stuff that will haunt your dreams. Like terrifying. It will definitely haunt mine. Imagine human sheep wandering the world. No thanks. Clearly this experiment was done by some evil scientist that decided, heck, I'm going to just let this happen and see how it unfolds. No one knows exactly how it was done, but most think the sheep was just artificially inseminated. The baby born was a stillborn, but if it had made it out alive, I bet you the world would have been on the hunt for the person responsible. In our number one spot, we have Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. Known from his title, The Red Frankenstein, who was said to have been the creator of artificial insemination. His interest eventually turned into being interested in crossbreeding. In the 1920s, he traveled to Africa after already successfully crossbreeding a zebra and a donkey, he now wanted to crossbreed a human and an ape. Apparently, after a while of living in Africa, he became desperate as his funds became increasingly low that he then began to inseminate African women with chimpanzees without their knowledge. Holy, that's disgusting. Eventually, when people found out about what he was doing, he was shut down and his name was forever tarnished and yeah, I'm glad because that's horrible. Starting our list off at number 10, the turkey fake out. Okay, this one is pretty hilarious. I have to start off our list here, especially in a dark list about crossbreeding, come on. Back in the 60s, turkey biologists in Pennsylvania thought, you know what, what if a male turkey was in a room with a fake turkey? Yeah, a fake female turkey. Would he try and flirt with it? Would he, I am legend, this fake turkey? What would happen? Well, the answer is yes, these male turkeys would try and mate with a fake turkey, which is funny, but by the end of the test, they were really surprised more than anything. They would just have the head of a turkey on a stick and these dudes still came out like, hey, what's going on, you single, what's up? <laughs> what's happening? It didn't matter, it was just the head and the rest didn't matter. The sticks chicks over here are catching every turkey's attention, but why? Why don't they care about the body? What's going on? Like biologically, this makes no sense. The scientific conclusion here, yes, there was one, was that the turkey fixates on the head when it comes to finding a mating partner, which is honestly pretty sweet. They're holding eye contact the whole time, even with their bobby weird heads. They're still like, hey, it's just you and me, let's talk. Number nine, the gastric brooding frog. Okay, now we're back. Now, immediately back to business. Crossbreeding and gastric brooding. Okay, we're getting scientific now. I'm a big fan of frogs, except for when they hatch eggs out of their back. We don't like those. Our editors also don't like those clips either. I found out the hard way. I'm like, yeah, insert clip of a frog coming out of other frogs back from 129. They're like, please God, no. So, bless your soul. Give the thumbs up for our editors today. Thumbs up for all of our editors today. We give them horrible, horrible links they have to put together and make it into art. These frogs, not so bad. These frogs would swallow their eggs and they would hatch them out of their mouth. Honestly, they're fascinating creatures. And with the recent Lazarus Project, scientists are trying to bring the Australian gastric brooding frog back from extinction so we can see 
Blah. We can see all that again in person. We can see them. Honestly, I think the back stuff's better now that I think about it. A frog coming out of a mouth? Ooh. Blah. It went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have now figured out how to implant dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. Yeah, just zombie frogs, I guess. Zombie frogs that give birth through their mouths. Do we know what we're doing here? Sounds weird when you say it out loud. Uh, but, but, but. Amphibians are declining worldwide, so if we can get these guys out of extinction, we're looking good. We're looking better, rather. Number eight, Martha. Look, I like to keep it light, so I have to include my girl Martha on this list. The passenger pigeon, she once flocked over the skies of Canada. This was back in the 19th century. Billions of these bright orange pigeons would paint the skies, and rumor has it, they would fly in flocks so large that it would block out the sun for a short amount of time. Beautiful, could you imagine? Flock step block, we love it. But only a few decades passed and passenger pigeons are now no more. They're entirely extinct, sad stuff. The very last passenger pigeon, her name was Martha. She passed away in the Cincinnati Zoo back in 1914. So we took a look at her DNA to see if Martha held any secrets to their extinction and we found a key. Possibly we could bring Martha back. I don't know why I did that, it's pretty dark. Like a little bird. <laughs> Wouldn't work at all. They discovered Martha had a low genetic diversity for such a growing population. Natural selection and hunting eliminated arguably the nicest looking pigeon. The last one died in 1914, but in 2019, paleontologists found remains of the pigeon in protected indigenous lands in the Northwest Territories. So now we have hope, right there. They blended passenger pigeon DNA with Archaeoteryx dinosaur DNA. Yeah, we're bringing back pigeons with a touch of dinosaur. I'll say it again, on one hand, yeah, that's, that's great. I'm glad science is allowing us to try again, but look at the pigeons we have now. What's gonna happen to these guys? They're hardcore. Pigeons now will walk onto the subway. They'll ask you what time it is. They don't care. These graceful birds from the 1910s, I don't think they're ready. That's like a back to the future. That's like hot tub time machine type. I'm like, ah, uh, you guys won't get along. Number seven, woolly rhinoceros. Since I mentioned the revival of woolly mammoths in part one, what better time to mention this hairy beast? The woolly rhino, okay. I oddly want to pet him, weirdly. Once upon a time, these rhinos were common throughout Europe and Asia. They were all prepared for the cold tundra, hence the fur, the thick blanket of fur. Just like the woolly mammoth, right? They adapt to survive. So no ice age will stop this rhino. Ideally, that was the, that was the plan. I mean, it didn't help them out entirely, but it was mostly humans needing food and warmth that led to their extinction. So cut to 14,000 years later, we're trying to apologize. We're trying to make it up to them by bringing them back to life. It's a little hotter now, good luck. The same company responsible for the Mammoth Project is also trying to bring back this hairy boy. I mean, yeah, again, I'm all for science, but if these species died out that long ago, will highways help them? Imagine running into one of these. Number six. Megatherium. We talked about bringing back woolly rhinos and woolly mammoths, so what other Ice Age cast members can we potentially see on the highway? Perhaps the Megatherium, aka the giant sloth? I, why are we doing this? What if this works? We don't want to see this. Sloths used to be mm -hmm, a lot bigger than we think, folks. We often laugh at them for being slow and stuff. The movie Ice Age sure didn't help their case, but we learned, we learned stuff. Like the dodo bird, we're bringing them back. Sloths. We're also bringing them back. Of course, the giant ground sloth is closely related to our modern three-toed sloth, but luckily for us, today's sloths aren't the size of an elephant. That would be a horror film if we brought these back. Like, let's just leave normal sloths. We may be able to bring this one back, although they died off thousands of years ago due to DNA samples. Yeah, we got some DNA samples extracted from their hair remains, so the next step now that's waiting for us is to develop a fetus in an artificial womb. That's the hard part, but we're very close. Too close, I'd say. Stop. If you're working on any, you know, Megatherium science projects, just, you know, chill. Just chill out for a bit. Number five, spider art. For a nice halfway point here, I have to mention NASA's 1995 spider test, which sounds really scary, but it's not that bad. Hear me out. When nature meets science, we often get jarring results, be it hybrid animals, clones, you name it. Spiders, as fascinating as they already are, can be even more mysterious especially when they're exposed to mind-altering illicit substances. Yeah, just some hardcore stuff. NASA wanted to determine the toxicity between said substances and what differences they may look like. Spiders are fascinating. We can literally see how they think and survive. We see it up close when we walk through them and go, oh, ew, ew, gross, but we never see them like this, right? Caffeinated behavior is all over the place. It doesn't look like a normal spider at all, but with hallucinogens, it's the same shape, but it's almost missing steps, right? Little differences between all these tests. I don't think any animal should have coffee, period. I don't think an espresso goes well with any bug. 
Yeah, trust, trust me. I'm all jacked up on coffee right now. The moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago, and I'm pretty glad. They're absolutely terrifying. They were flightless birds, uh, massive, hence the flightlessness, and archaeologists first discovered a fossil in a cave. Its flesh and everything was still attached. It looked something out of a horror movie. It was terrible. These ancient birds would reach around five or six feet tall, and when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think, oh, that's, that's quite petite. No, this is horrible. The birds stopped flying right after these dinosaurs went extinct. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University in Canberra, these birds safely roamed the land after they didn't need to make, you know, daring dinoscapes. So they got fat, they walked around, they stopped flying, and they just retired. Then they would hang out in caves and just eat good. Phillips says this is an advantage when it came to birds in evolution because wings, big or small, kill energy. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature, yeah, lose the ability to fly, but it's because they're eating better, right? Eh, I would rather eat really well than fly, to be honest. I can't even fly now, and I'm like, eh, I'd still rather just eat a lot. Again, why are we mixing DNA of a dinosaur with new birds? This is where we turn into Jurassic Park. Any minute. Next year, I'll be like, hey, top 10 animals that made the test and now we're screwed. Number three, the stellar sea cow. Stellar indeed. Yeah, the stellar sea cow was named after George Wilhelm Steller, who discovered this massive creature back in the mid 1700s during the Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition. They found her right after the crew became shipwrecked. What a lovely little surprise to an otherwise horrible situation. They were all over the place two million years ago. They were no match for humans at all. They only swam around a meter deep, and once humans came into the picture much later, they were very easy to hunt. They were fat little blubber balls just that would sit in shallow water. I mean, come on. You just... George Steller commented that the animals had an uncommon love for their families, which made it even easier to hunt. Considering the one year gestation period, the species couldn't reproduce fast enough to keep up with our hunting. But with this list, we have a little hope, right? That's why I'm here. Hi, now you're sad. I'm here to make your day a little happier. Scientists were able to sequence the genome, which means that we may see these creatures very soon, one day. Hopefully soon. The answer may lie in the DNA of a dugong. Yeah, dugongs are the cow of the sea, so what better relative to kind of pick apart and maybe crossbreed. Number two, the mouse with an ear on its back. And we're right back to horrible stuff, okay. If we ever reboot Stuart Little, this guy needs to audition, he's killing it. The mouse with a human ear, folks. This is like the world's greatest mouse spy. This is horrible. What are we looking at here? Why did someone do this? Well, back in 1997, this mouse became the test subject to determine if scientists could grow cartilage using chondrocytes, AKA cells from a cow. Well, it worked, and we're still talking about it, obviously, because it's the weirdest thing I've ever looked at. Yeah, Joseph began designing human organs, and this was during a shortage where human organs wasn't just like, you know, common, easy thing to get. He wasn't just bored and, you know, started making ears. He was, he was changing the medical game, okay? And little did he know he was about to change the science game as well. He constructed an ear, a fake ear, then told his brother Chuck and his partner Bob not to bring up the fact that he attached said ear to a mouse. But Chuck, obviously, because of what happened, he, he spilled the beans, he told a few friends. But now, we all know how cow cartilage can create cells, so little secret became great science. I really want to Q-tip his back. Is that weird? I want to Q-tip the mouse with an ear on its back's ear back. And finally, number one, the multi-dog. Okay, crossbreeding experiments from hell. Let's finish on a really messed up one. The multi-dog. This was back in the 50s when a Soviet scientist, Vladimir Demikov, created a well, a multi-headed dog. Time Magazine covered it, of course. This is a feat in science. As cruel as it is, of course, this was a big deal. The adult dog had a newborn pup grafted to its neck. So when it grew, it could survive off the blood of the main bigger dog. The body, for lack of a better term. When observed, the puppy did have its own characteristics. It was playful, it was growling, it would lick people's hand and stuff like that, just as the other dog's characteristics would be in its own unique way. It's a sad 1950s Soviet animal experiment, so of course the animal didn't survive a long time, but crossbreeding experiments from hell, that's, that's why we're here. This is the note that we're gonna end on. Starting off this countdown, we have the wall fin. Take a guess at what two animals were bred for this one. If you guessed a whale and a dolphin, you're correct. A wall fin is a mix between an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. The first recorded wall fin was born in 1981 in Tokyo Sea World. But sadly, he only lived to around six months. Probably a prime example of why they shouldn't exist in the first place. Another wolf in was later born at a sea life park in Hawaii in 1985. But she had trouble reproducing and all her babies sadly passed away. In our ninth spot today, we have the horse human. 
And this one is going to ruin your day completely. In 2001, a man was caught trying to inject human sperm into a horse. He had done this to about six horses until he was caught by police and arrested. Thankfully, none of the horses got pregnant. But ew, imagine if they did. Woo. In our eighth spot, we have the Iron Age Pig. Now take a look at this porker, he is a chunky guy. The Iron Age Pig is a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. Now something about that cross just does not sit right with me. Now people like breeding these pigs because they can get a lot of meat out of them or just sell them for a lot. But they are considered very hostile animals. This is due to the fact that wild boars are typically more aggressive. And that's a dominant trait that gets passed along to their offspring. Moving on to number seven, we have the infertile pink bullworm. The pink bullworms are invasive pests that lay eggs on cotton balls. And then once they hatch, the larvae eat the seeds and damage the cotton fibers. In 2005, the situation became so bad that scientists were like, okay, we gotta figure out a solution here. So they decided to create sterile pink bullworms. They did this by treating a bunch of moths with radiation. The radiation would damage their reproductive cells, but it wouldn't kill them. That way, when they encountered a normal pink bullworm and the two mated, bam, it would create an infertile pink bullworm. So for four years, two billion pink bullworm moths that were treated with radiation were released into Arizona's cotton fields. They literally would fly an airplane above the fields and just drop millions of these moths down onto the crops. And it worked. It helped with the bullworm problem. But imagine if their plan didn't work that could have gone really bad and damaged entire cotton fields. Coming in at number six, we have the sheep with human livers. In 2007, scientists at the University of Nevada, Reno, managed to grow human livers inside of a sheep. They did this by injecting human stem cells from bone marrow into sheep fetuses. Now they chose sheep as their test subjects because their circulatory system is very similar to ours. In the end, they managed to create livers made with 20% human cells. They are hopeful that one day this can be used to help grow human organs for those in need of a transplant inside these animals. But anything done with animals is highly controversial, especially when it has to do with injecting them with human DNA and stuff. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cows. I swear, no animal is safe out there, okay? Not even cows. In 2008, British researchers were given the okay to conduct some human animal experiments. As part of the experiment, they decided to manipulate cow eggs. So they took the nucleus of the cow egg, which has the source of the most DNA, and they replaced it with the nucleus of a human cell to create a growing embryo. They then watched the egg develop and multiply. Scientists could then extract the stem cells from this. They hope that one day they can use the stem cells in disease treatments. Moving on to number four, we have the Jeep. And I'm not talking about the car Jeep, we're talking G-E-E-P, okay? A mixture between a goat and a sheep. Now these animals are adorably cute, but sadly breeding the two can be a very risky game. Very few babies are actually carried to term, and even few manage to survive birth. Those that do often have a bunch of genetic abnormalities, but people still cross them together, which is just sad because you're breeding animals destined for failure, and for what reason? Moving on at number three, we have the Jaglion. Can you guys guess what this animal is a mix between? It's kind of obvious. It's a mix between a jaguar and a lion. But these animals are actually naturally born, which is wild. Like, I just can't imagine a jaguar and a lion getting it on. So it first started when a lion and a jaguar coexisted in the same zoo together. They were raised together and well, one thing led to another, bada bing bada boom, mama lion became prego. I shared this love story in another video, but it's so cute but also sad, but I just wanna share it again. So there once was a jaguar named Diablo and a lion named Lola. The two were raised side by side and they were inseparable. When Lola got mature though, they kept Diablo away from her so that they wouldn't mate. But whenever they were apart, both animals got depressed. It got so bad to the point where Lola wouldn't even eat. So they brought them back together and they were happy and eating and thriving again. You can't keep true love apart. And obviously one thing did lead to another and they did end up mating and they had two jaglian babies together and they all lived happily ever after. Coming in at number two, we have the goat human. I can't with this one. 
Okay, I just can't. But this image right here is said to be a picture of a human goat baby. Story goes that in 2016 in Alabama, of all places, a goat gave birth to an odd looking baby. In fact, its kid looked very human like. So it's said that this goat was actually the product of a human getting it on with the goat. I know, I know, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. I threw up in my mouth a little when I read that, but again, this is just a rumor. And and in our number one spot today, we have the hybrid lions. Now, this is actually a very sad example of crossbreeding gone wrong. In 2006, nearly two dozen crossbred lions in northern India were dying after they developed a mysterious disease. The disease was a result of inbreeding and a weakened gene pool. Basically, they didn't know this, but they kept breeding lions that all had this weakened gene, and nearly 80 lions were affected by this. The lions being born had weak hind legs and had difficulty walking, and they couldn't run at all. They also had failing immune systems and they weren't living too long. But the worst part was that they let these animals suffer. There's a wildlife law in India which prohibits the killing of animals. So basically, they had to just wait for these lions to die a slow, painful death on their own. It's a very tragic case of breeding gone wrong. <laughs>